What's going on, Canes fans? Welcome to episode number 13, the final episode of Walking and Venting with Coop for the 2022 season. This is a series where I walk along the edge of my property and we talk about a hot, debatable, controversial topic when it comes to the Miami Hurricanes. And man, today is a windy, dreary day here in East Tennessee, quite fitting for the last walking and venting, wrapping up the 2022 college football season for the Miami Hurricanes. Hopefully the audio is okay and the wind isn't unbearable. If it is, then uh, too bad. I don't, I don't really know what else to say or what to do. Uh, now, a quick disclaimer. Let's go ahead and get this out of the way like we have to do in every single walking and venting. There are going to be so many people down in the comment section. Coop, why are you stirring the pot? Coop, why are you talking about drama and being so negative? That is what this series is for. If you're new here, the point of this series is to discuss negative things. To, to bring up controversial topics and talk about them openly, unfiltered, raw. That's what this series is for, and it's why we do it. And it's a big reason why I love it and why so many other people on this channel love it. So let's just go ahead and be blunt, and let's get this thing rolling. Mario Cristobal is everything that Oregon fans warned us about, and then some. And yes, his first season here at the University of Miami as our head coach is a complete and utter failure, period. Now, let me add, however, that even though I just said Mario Cristobal is everything that Oregon fans warned us about and then some, I still believe in the guy. And he hasn't shown me anything yet. You know, it's at this point, it's all been talk and... There's only been one season, one full opportunity to be able to show us anything. And he hasn't done that in year one, obviously. But I do still, for some reason, believe in the guy. I don't know if it's just blind faith. I don't know if it's because I, I, I believe in, in, in his vision. I don't know if it's me just buying into what he's saying. I honestly don't have an answer. But I just need to plug in here that I do still believe in Mario Cristobal. And I do think that in the end, it's going to take a little while, but I do think that he has the potential to turn this around. The potential. I just want to make sure that people understand it's not only hate. It's not me just throwing shade at Mario. There is no way that you can jump down in the comment section and tell me that Mario Cristobal and this team made any progress in the 2022 season. And if you think that we did, look, I'm not talking about the little small moral victories. I'm not talking about, well, this guy's stats jumped from this to this. No, 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 no. I'm talking about overall, the Miami Hurricanes 2022 season. Even just, let me give you an example. I want you to take week three and compare it to the game last night. And tell me where Miami drastically improved, in what category, in what position group. I really don't think that anyone can give me a, an answer that would change my mind. I really don't think so. And uh, that is, number one, a big reason why this season was a complete and utter failure. No progress, no progression, no positives. Nothing that I can really look at and say, man, this gives me hope going into 2023. And recruiting doesn't count, guys. I'm talking about what we saw on the field that led me to believe that these guys were being developed and that we are seeing some progress, some sort of hope, something to hang on to going into next season. You're not going to be able to convince me of that. We made no progress this season, period. Also, just being blunt here, I mean, the obvious elephant in the room, a 5-7 and seven Final record, absolutely pitiful, disgusting. I said one thing that Mario had to do this year was win more games than Manny Diaz because otherwise the fan base was going to pick up their pitchforks and torches and call for his head 
because there's no way that he couldn't win more games than Manny Diaz, right? We pumped all this money into the program, brought in all the big-time names, all these big-time hires, which we're going to get to here in a second. I actually think that there's actually more cons than pros to that. We'll get to it here in a minute. I'm getting ahead of myself. And I said that he needed to win more games than Manny, and he wasn't able to do it. There, there, there's so much more to the five and seven than meets the eye. It's actually much worse than it looks, in my opinion. I know you're thinking, Coop, how does it get much worse than five and seven in your first year? Well, let me explain. Who were our five wins against? <clears throat> Bethune Cookman, nobody cares. You're expected to beat that team. Southern Miss, nobody cares. You're expected to beat that team. Virginia Tech, a bad ACC team. Newsflash, we're also a bad ACC team, but you're expected to beat those other bad ACC teams. Virginia, well, yeah, we beat uh, them, another bad ACC team, but it took quadruple overtime. And last but not least, Georgia Tech. Do you, do you see something in common with all those teams on that list? A bunch of nobodies. We didn't, we, guys, we didn't beat anybody. Not one. Not one team. And that's a tough pill to swallow, man. Even all things considered, with it being year one and the new coaching staff, new schemes, that's still tough. And it, it, it's not even about, when it comes to the teams that we lost to, it's more than just wins and losses. It's how we lost. It's how we won. A lot of the games we won, close games. A lot of the games that we lost, we got our doors blown off. Bro, Middle Tennessee and Duke? I know, Coop, you're beating a dead horse. I get it, but this is this is kind of wrapping up the season and getting my last little venting out about some things that happened, so bear with me for a moment. Man, instead of talking about a signature win, maybe against Texas A&M, who we thought was better at the time, or Clemson, who has had our number for a hot minute. Dabo hates Miami. We're talking about Mario's signature loss. This, this season, will Mario will never live this season down. Mario can take us to the promised land five, six, seven years from now, however long it takes. And people are still going to say, you, you remember, though, that signature loss? You remember when MTSU came to Hard Rock, curb stomped us, and then made T-shirts about it and said the tougher team wins? He's never going to be able to live that down. Just complete, utter disappointment and failure in year one. Can we also talk about the fact that uh, we're still not sure if Mario and or ja Josh Gaddis basically sabotaged the 2022 season because they tried to force an offensive scheme that just was not a fit here at Miami. Now this is again a, a very tough topic to discuss because... Some people want Gaddis fired. Some people don't want Gaddis fired. Uh, some people, are, again, are going to point at the depleted O-line, um, wide receiver issues, quarterback problems, yada, yada. But no matter how you want to look at this thing, it is a very interesting topic still to this day to discuss, even at the end of the season. I don't really think that... that Josh Gaddis is not... Is Josh Gaddis a fraud? Royals award winner. Michigan looks just as good, if not better, without him. He's an offensive coordinator. You don't just get to that status with luck, do you? With paying somebody off, with knowing somebody, do you? It, it's tough because at times... It really does seem like that Gaddis and or Mario, because I really think this is the type of offense Mario wants to run. What you guys have to understand is everyone just instantly says fire Gaddis, which I don't blame those people. But we're saying fire Gaddis for what? To have Mario bring in Josh Gaddis 2.0? Because Mario wants to run a more power spread type of offense. Mario, I don't think, is interested in an up-tempo, all-out spread offense. And... The issue is, is if we're saying that they're trying to run an offense based off of the player personnel that they're planning on bringing in, it kind of sabotaged this season, did it not? If that is actually truly the case. 
Now, I know Gaddis is saying we ran this offense, we mixed this up, we changed this. But I just, I, at this point, man, I don't know. I have no freaking idea. And surely, okay, if they did do that, that's just pure stupidity. Honestly, and I'm just a couch coach. I'm just a fan. But if they were willing to continue to push an offense that wasn't a fit for this team, again, my I know the injuries. I, I know, I know, guys. But if that is something that happened, that's just stupid. Absolutely stupid because it does nothing but hurt us right now in the moment. Now, we're also, some people are going to talk about football IQ. They're going to say, you know, with Josh Gaddis running more, this kind of pro-style offense that, you know, there are guys that just couldn't grasp it. And, and I, again, guys, I don't know. Uh, chop it up down in the comment section and let me know because there's a million different ways that we could take this thing. Uh, but either way, that is still something that could contribute to this being just a complete, utter disappointment of a season. <sighs> There's also the fact that we brought in so many big time names on this coaching staff and somehow it proved to be more of a problem, an issue, a negative thing. And at times what's interesting guys is you do see that in the world of sports. You actually just see that in life in general. Uh, I'm terrible with analogies, but what happened to the Lakers? Wasn't Anthony Davis supposed to be this big time player? mixed in with LeBron James and uh, who else? There's there's another big time player on the Lakers. I, I don't watch basketball, but anyways, I'm just saying, you think that you formed this dream team, the Avengers, right? But sometimes what happens is there's too many big dogs in the room. There are too many guys that are used to being head honchos, guys that have a ton of experience and either maybe they're not hungry anymore or you just have too many guys butting heads. There's too many guys that are used to being the one that people are coming to. They're calling the shots. And then when you put them under somebody and you mix all those guys together, sometimes it just doesn't work. And I think to an extent, maybe we have too many big time names on this coaching staff. I can't believe I'm talking like this. I can't believe I'm literally coming on this platform and saying, I think we hired too many big name guys. But in a way, I kind of think we did. Maybe we should maybe we should lower the budget a little bit and bring in some hungry guys, some guys that want to prove themselves, and then maybe we'll give them raises based off of how well they perform here at Miami and start them low, make them earn it. I don't know, but then it's a problem because we don't get to just go pick whoever we want to come to Miami, guys. Everybody thinks it's we... We uh, live where you vacation. Come to Miami, the Sunshine State, beaches, and a bunch of L's ruining your career. You get to come here for one year, and then you got to go through all the trouble of moving because you're getting canned the year after that. And it's tough, man, because fans, we, myself included, I'm, I'm guilty, we set the, the expectations too high. And in a way, that's it's kind of bad to say that because you should always put the expectations high. But man, we set ourselves up for this. Really, we did. And what's wild is that I was absolutely verbally assaulted online for my 9-3 and three prediction. And bro, I was not even close. I was called not a fan. Coop, there's no way you can tell me there's three losses on this schedule. You're right. There wasn't three. There was seven. So, man, do not let me give you a warning. Don't drink the Kool-Aid. Kool-Aid is bad for you, first off. It's just a bunch of sugar and, and, and fake sweeteners. And, and Bro, it's bad. It's bad. Don't, don't drink Kool-Aid ever, 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 ever. And you best believe I'm not drinking Kool-Aid ever again. I don't care what flavor it is. But, man, for 2023, we best be throwing all of our expectations out the window. We now have a baseline. It was five wins in 2022. All I'm hoping for in 2023 is six wins with bowl eligibility, and at most, the ceiling is seven. I'm sorry, 2023 class coming in, that's freshmen. Uh, you, you guys are talking about them coming in on the O-line. They're going to make mistakes. Is what it is. I also want to ask you guys when it comes to the players, because it's not just the coaching staff. It's, it's a, a group effort. Also, when we're looking at the players, sometimes you have guys that are just ballers. Guys that are just playmakers that make something happen on the field 
regardless of what play is called, whatever is happening, because they just want it more. They're just more athletic, more talented, whatever. Who was our consistent playmaker for the 2022 season? And I'll give you a second. I'll wait. I'll wait, because I, I really want you to think about that. And don't come in here, and here's the deal. I, friends, I'm not going to trash the players. These guys are family until they decide to transfer, you know, whatever. I said who was the consistent playmaker all season. Someone we could lean on, someone we could rely on, depend on. When he was on the field, he was going to make a difference. Who was it? Because there were some guys that showed up late in the season, guys like, you know, Cam Kenchins, uh... Is that it? Is that it? I mean, LT played pretty good when he was in there. I don't label any of those guys consistent playmakers. And I'm not, I get, guys, I'm not dogging them. They have time to grow. They're going to get better, and they can be. But I'm just talking about what the 2022 season actually was. Be real. Stop sugarcoating it. We didn't have any consistent playmaker on either side of the ball, offense or defense. And correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe you'll bring up a name and I'll have a light bulb moment and I'll be like, yo, you're right. But I don't think that we had that guy this season. And if you want to blame scheme or development, you want to blame coaching, whatever, that's fine. Or you just want to blame the player, that's also fine. I'm just bringing it up. I'm just mentioning it. And there's also just the fact, this is an obvious one, that we set record lows for the program in multiple categories records that i didn't think could be broken even if we tried but somehow we found a way in the 2022 season to do so as i said mario cristobal is everything that oregon fans warned us about and more he's uh, not the best game day coach uh he has to strike gold with his coordinators and uh he's a great recruiter somehow we've maintained a top 10 recruiting class we're 10 or 11 i think at this point maybe nine we're floating around somewhere in there with a five and seven record how the man does it i have no freaking idea but i'm very thankful for it and as i said it's not all negative because here's what's funny somehow i just spent 15 minutes talking about how we are just utter garbage this has been a complete failure of a season but yet somehow coop is cautiously optimistic and I don't really know how to explain it I don't want to hear people say it's only up from here because that's not always the case don't say it can't get any worse because it absolutely can but somehow I'm I am still optimistic about the future and I I can't put my finger on it yet maybe some of you guys can explain it to me maybe it's my fandom getting in the way I don't know Maybe it's me just wanting us to be successful. I'm not really sure. But somehow I am still cautiously optimistic. Like I said, I don't think 20, 20, 2023 is going to be much better. I'm just going to go ahead and break your heart right now. Don't, don't come on here and predict 12-0 and 0 or 10-0. and 0. Don't predict ACC championship. The ACC is wide open next year. It's divisionless. That's going to make it even tougher on us. So next year uh, is still not a big-time year for the Miami Hurricanes. Let's go. Go ahead and let you know. Um, but man, I, I think that some changes will be made. I know guys like Alonzo Highsmith and some of these other guys in the room are going to make sure that we do make some changes. But that still doesn't guarantee that we're going to be a, a top-notch program anytime soon. And just like I said in my previous walking and venting, I don't think that we're going to be good anytime soon. I think before you see actual real progress with this team, a team that is competing for conference championships, I think you're looking at 2025, 2026. I'm talking years, year four and five. And most fans are going to say three will evaluate. We need to be close. But years four and five before you realistically see a big time difference in this program. And it sucks, man, but has to completely crumble and burn and go from there. But is this rock bottom? Many of us are hoping so, but I can't realistically come up here and say for sure that it is because it might not be. I guess that's it. Man, the final walking and venting of the 2022 season. This just feels surreal, man. It, 
I love this series so much because I get to be raw and unfiltered and honestly I don't care if people love these or hate them if they don't agree with my opinion that's fine I, I come on here and I voice it regardless I don't care if I hurt anyone's feelings this series has been a lot of fun this year and I hope that you guys have enjoyed it I hope it's you know made your Sunday a little bit better or at least given you an opportunity to you know vent about the season and talk openly about things because not every platform provides that not everybody is cool with letting you vent and voice your opinion, you know, through the ups and the downs, the good and the bad. But that's what I like to do on this channel. That's, that's what this platform is for, is to bring the fans together so we can hang out and discuss Miami Hurricanes football openly. Judgment-free zone, man. Now, we get into some fights and arguments, but it is what it is. That's what family does, right? Year one under Mario Cristobal, complete, utter failure, disappointment, dumpster fire, don't know if it could have got much worse. It could have, but it's pretty dang bad. It's pretty bad, y'all. Um, off season starts now. The purge has begun. Early signing day coming up soon. I'm gonna miss these, man. I'm gonna miss these. But we're not going anywhere. We're not going anywhere. Just the last walking and venting. Show some love on this thing, y'all. Man, if you enjoyed this series, show some love down in the comment section. Show me what this series meant to you. Let me know. Give me some feedback, and let's talk about the topics that I discussed in this one. Remember, though, guys, we're all one big happy college football family, but at the end of the day, I got to say, it's always better when you get to rep the you. Coach Coop, peace out. Signing off for the final walking and venting.